Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Henry of Dixon United Methodist Church, and today I will be leading you all in a brief devotion. Uh, today's scripture reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 2, and it says this, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. Howard Thurman, the theologian that we have been exploring scripture with, writes, The human spirit is so involved in the endless cycle of birth, of living and dying, that in some sense each man is an authority, a key interpreter of the meaning of the totality of the experience. The testimony, the testimony of the individual then, is always fresh if he is able to make himself articulate to his fellows. When the external circumstances of life are dramatic or unusual, causing the human spirit to make demands upon all the reaches of its resources in order to keep from being engulfed, then the value of its findings made articulate has more than passing significance. And we'll go over briefly what I believe Thurman is saying. But take time to pause this video and reflect on the following question. How would you describe the relationship between being ready to die, whether it may be metaphorically or physically, and being ready to live, metaphorically and physically? How would you describe the relationship between ready to die and being ready to live? Are you ready for one or the other or for both? I would like to think about death and life today metaphorically. One can be dead and still be physically living. We all experience death in various ways. The difficult moments in life and also the moments in which we fail to affirm life. Death comes with injustice, war, racism, bigotry, and that which prevents us from loving our neighbor and allowing our neighbors to feel loved. Death comes when we don't take care of each other. Death comes when we fail to respond to God's love and empowerment. Death comes when we fail to engage in the creative gifts that God has given us. But in a sense, one can also say that death is good. There are some parts of us that need to, in a sense, die. Our problematic biases, our prejudices, our toxic egos, bad habits, and the practices that we engage in that don't affirm life, that don't serve our neighbor, that may indeed harm our neighbor and ourselves. What needs to die is all that prevents love because God is love. We need to be ready to die to those things so that we can actually live. And, and maybe this is what Jesus meant when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. There is a time to die and there is a time to live. But in all these moments of a season of death, a season of living, it's also a time to learn and share, to realize that we're doing this in community with one another. And I would like to think that this is what Thurman means when he says, when the external circumstances of life are dramatic or unusual, causing the human spirit to make demands upon all all the reaches of its resourcefulness in order to keep itself from being engulfed, then the value of its findings made articulate has more than passing significance. And so I think that in seasons of death, in seasons of life, God allows us to learn and grow, to be able to articulate what we have learned and share that wisdom to the rest of the community, to our neighbors, so that others can experience life, so that others can move through a season of death and being there together. And in the midst of all that, we can all move closer to God's love in every season. And so this week, I invite you to write about the things, this may be difficult, write about the things that prevent you from loving God and loving neighbor. Meditate and actually voice out gratitude now on also the things that move you toward God and neighbor. And then finally, pray for those who are dying, 
afraid of death or in a season of metaphorical death, that they might find the courage through faith in the author of life and pray for all those who walk through the darkest valley, that they would fear no evil, for God is with them. God is with me. God is with you in every season. Amen.